having a good reputation is critically important if you want to maximise your success and make the, the most progress towards your chosen goals. Having a bad reputation is a big problem, and for many people it becomes insurmountable. But I don't personally believe it is ever the case that there is nothing you can do to recover and improve your reputation. I'm Colin Gortry and I've recently been interviewed by a journalist on this very subject, looking at some of public figures and how they have responded to their reputational cut and thrust. And I thought it would be good to share with you some of the key questions that I was asked and the responses that I've gave, because if you want to improve your reputation, there are some simple steps that you can begin to take today. A reputation is really nothing more than what people perceive about you as an individual. It's the sort of accumulated expectations that people have, um, but it's really important that you work out who those people are. And if you're looking to build a reputation and to become, you know, sort of, or to get some different messages across to people, you need to know who those people are. And then the reputation becomes sort of almost like what expectation, what what impression have they got of you as a as an individual, as a professional? Uh, and a lot of the problem, a lot of the problem comes down to people. People don't think this through beforehand they don't sort of deliberately go out to create a good reputation they might want to make a good impression but it stays as vague as good you know and I think that creates a a little bit of a problem and people can people can make an awful lot more progress if they get clear about exactly what sort of impression and reputation they do want to create and I think so that's what it wants so overall reputation is about on the other end what people are thinking about you as an individual I think reputation does matter and I think it it's really really important that people get their heads around this because you cannot get really successful in this world without making good impressions with other people you can't survive in ice in splendid isolation so you've got to um you've got to actually get other people warming up to you so that even before you get to a particular meeting they sort of know where you're going to be coming from they know what to expect they know what they can gain from interacting with you and i think that's another another really important point because it's not just about the job that you do it's about the way that you do it the way that you make other people feel as well in the progress of that job that creates those strong good positive vibes that people really want to welcome you again it's not just a a one hit wonder they'll want you back again they'll know where else they might be able to use you and that then I think gives people with integrity a lot more opportunity a lot more chance that they're not going to get ignored and they're going to be able to continue to do more good work without having to try too hard to get those opportunities so if you like a little bit about a little bit of forethought is going to go an awful long way in helping to keep it simple and make getting the opportunities uh, a, a lot more more well they're, they're going to be more readily available I think is, is what I would say to that. I mean, why, why, why do I say people are often ignored? I think, well, apart from the, the, the state of my inbox and the because I, I do a lot of conversations with people who are entering my network, and I'd almost guess that seven out of ten people are saying they're not getting the attention that they feel they are due or that they they deserve from particularly a more senior audience so they've got a huge amount of talent and ambition really good ideas of how they can better serve the organization but people aren't listening and i think that's where it starts to become a problem so you know my bet you know based on what i what the conversations that i have with people seven out of ten people are not getting enough attention and i think that's really important and why aren't they getting it It's because, well, why should people pay attention to it? They're not thinking through the value that they're adding to other people's agenda, particularly those senior people that they want to get the attention of. And, you know, until you start to do that as a as a professional, you're all you've got is the results that you're getting. And this is a the subtle art of almost positioning what you're really good at, the work that you're doing, the results that you're getting into the agendas of the other powerful people that can then give you more opportunity and i think that's where it becomes really really important oh now now you're asking a a very difficult question okay i'm gonna i'm gonna go with some very public stuff 
here and particularly the the brexit campaign and the the politics around it and the caveat here to start off with is i'm not closely intimately watching the political scene so i'm just a casual observer of what is going on but there are some interesting lessons we can learn about how to manage reputations and what can go wrong by just really reading reading the papers and the news stories around the brexit campaign for for instance you know there were two you know irrespective of where you are on the on the divide for or against in or out i think it's just important to depersonalize it and look at what's happened and before the vote on the 23rd of june there were many politicians who were shouting from the rooftops that Armageddon was on the way, uh, David Cameron and George Osborne being perhaps some of the notable examples and certainly the impression I got as an observer and many others got was that the world was going to end if we decided to, as a nation to leave the European Union and the way the rhetoric that was coming from those two individuals was almost bewildering and a lot of people were saying they were promoting the fear that some of the figures that they were putting out was that the house prices were going to drop by a third 850 million people were suddenly going to be out of work the economy was going to tailspin and nosedive and here we are sort of six months later and it hasn't happened. We voted as a nation to, to leave, and yes, it's it's yet to happen. But yeah, there has been some economic differences. But where it comes to reputation and the way people re react and manage their reputation is that for those two individuals that I've thus far named, it's, it's been catastrophic for them because you know Cameron has not only resigned as Prime Minister but also as Member of Parliament and has completely disappeared um, maybe he'll come back and another day I don't know but you know I think the general sense is that you know yes he's done a lot of good work for for the country but you know in respect to the Brexit vote he didn't do what people were wanting him to do or he was expected to do so his reputation in a way has been sort of tarnished very much by that episode but more interesting than that is George Osborne and what appears to have happened to George Osborne because he's disappeared he's still around and he seems to be sort of skulking in the dark corridors of Westminster and occasionally will pop out but he hasn't done much to recover his reputation at least as a, as a casual observer looking from the outside in um, you hardly ever see him so I don't know whether he'll come back from that or not he has certainly clearly hasn't given up but he does look like like he has taken a huge hit at a very personal level because I mean it was 10 days I think after the vote before anybody heard from him and people were starting to ask the question where's he gone he's just completely disappeared and you kind of sort of empathize with the guy a little bit because he put heart and soul into it and he I'm sure totally believed in what he was saying and totally believed that what he was doing was for the good of the country but it just happened to be incorrect and subsequent history is showing us that you know a lot of his claims were were well not quite true um yeah on the other side of that there's also another couple of reputational things that we can learn from and particularly michael gove who was on the out campaign and michael gove it was quite interesting although he was on the winning side um, very quickly with cameron gone we suddenly had the leadership election and he threw his hat into the ring but stabbed Boris Johnson in the back very almost very publicly and so one minute he was okay the next minute he was just not fit for the job and it was seen as being a knight of the long knives and this is the way it was reported in the press that he had completely obliterated Boris Johnson which subsequent history shows he, he hadn't done that um, but as a result of that he ended up having to completely withdraw from the from the election from the from the from the uh, leadership contest uh, for the Conservative Party so you know he was one could almost say mortally wounded by his actions or alleged actions um, against her, one of his uh, so say friends. And if you can't, if he does that to friends, what's he going to do to enemies? Might be a reasonable sort of thing to think. But he's back. He's back on the scene, and I've noticed him being interviewed. He's even been with Donald Trump already, and that's been televised. He's been on discussion programs. He's picked himself back up, and I think there's a real big lesson here, rightly or wrongly, agree or disagree with the with the content of, of, of what they're doing, but he has taken a knock, he has taken a hit, and somehow has found it within him to keep going, to get back, to show that tenacity. 
But what he's having to do is reposition himself. So he's no longer uh, go, is seeming to be going for leading the, the Conservative Party, but he's clearly not finished yet. There's clearly more to him to come. And so he is repositioning himself in some way to get back out there, to get back on the ride, get on the journey to recovering of reputation and to building it again. And in the process, what's happening is people will start to forget. I mean, not everybody. I don't think anybody will really trust him totally again. If he can do that once, he can do that again. But, you know, this is the guy who is showing the tenacity to start to turn it around. And, to, and presumably he's got some really good intent. There's some really big things that he wants to do in his career and hopefully for the good of the country. But you can't ignore him. He's coming back and he's got a deliberate plan of action. And I think anybody who's in a position where they feel their reputation has been f mortally wounded, you totally fatal, a catastrophic uh, event, don't give up because there can be a way and there can be a lot of surprising ways, irrespective of what it is. You've got to work out what's going on, work out where you want to get to and start to make it happen is, is, is what I would say. So there are some interesting examples. As I say, I don't know the reality and well, probably most people don't know the reality of what happened to each of those individuals. And none of us know what's going to happen either. But I think there's some interesting lessons there that, you know, irrespective of whether you've got a bad reputation, you've trashed it, or, you know, you've got a good reputation or want a great reputation, what can we learn from these things? And I think by studying some of these public figures, you can start to see. And it's not just you know, confined to politics. I mean, look into the, the pop world, the media world, the business world, all of these things are going on. And I think people need to be a little bit more aware of the impact and the reputational angles to some of these public news stories that are going on, because then, hey, what can I learn from, from that? Yeah, it is about being proactive. Uh, you know, you can't, I don't think you can, if, you, if you've got concerns about your reputation, if you're not quite sure where it is, you've really got to take action because the, the, the less you do, the more prominent whatever the bad news is is going to stick there and stay in people's mind and yes you if you if you are recovering from a, a negative impression or a bad reputation or a reputation that's been you've got to perhaps do an awful lot of work as well so the sooner you get back on back in the saddles back in the driving seat moving forward so long as you've got a very clear notion of where you want to get to, what you ultimately want to achieve, you've got to be taking a thousand little steps. You've got to be really moving it forward in as many different directions as it's humanly possible, but with a very clear focus about where you are going. And you know, you, you're not going to get anywhere by doing nothing you know, other than really bedding yourself in and locking yourself into something that you don't really want. So yes, you have got to get very, very busy. Any circumstances where... No, I think where there's a will, there is a way, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, I'm sure there are certain things that are not recoverable, are extremely difficult to overcome because society, generally society is not as like paedophilia or something like that. If somebody has been, you know, convicted of that, you know, it seems to me that that's the end. It's extremely difficult. I, I'm not, I don't know of anybody who, who, who has done that. Gangland, drugs, you know, misdemeanours in public life, all of that, there are good examples of where people have recovered and done good with it as well. So people who have, you know, turned from a life of crime to teaching children how to avoid getting suckered into things like that. People who have sort of slipped on the ethics side and, you know, fessed up and apologised and started to create a, a, a cause and a movement towards something good. If you're not doing anything, you're not going to recover it. So what I would say is, that, you know, whatever has happened to you, just calm remove some of the emotions for a while and look at the facts quite often it's not as bad as you think it is we all have this sort of i think understandable natural sort of obsession with how obsessed other people are in us how interested other people are in what's going on in our world but Actually, the reality is often very different. I mean, yes, there are notable public, you know, the, the the big stars in the world and what have you. Well, yes, there is a lot being thought about them. But for most ordinary people, people don't care half as much about you as you think they do. Therefore, they're not as sensitive to the impression as you are. 
So sometimes you've got to get over yourself and realise that, OK, it's it's not the reality. It's not here. And I had somebody on a webinar a couple of weeks ago who, you know, put this across and he thought he was completely finished in his company. He was going to have to leave because his reputation was completely ruined because a project had gone bad. During the webinar, he picked up a lot of a lot of interesting ideas. And one particular one was to actually go and find out for sure what people are thinking. And he went and did that. And he was absolutely shocked with how little the problem was in the minds of the key stakeholders and and actually he told me and it was great to hear from him because he said you know I was about to leave and now I know that I don't need to leave and now I know what I need to change in order to recover the good grace of those key stakeholders and I've actually built the relationship with them as well and so quite often it's not as bad but when you're particularly in the public domain that feedback is sometimes quite difficult to get but try and sort of bring it get get some context to where you are at the moment get very clear about where you want to go and start to brainstorm and get innovative and creative about how you might be able to start to reposition yourself so that you can capitalize on what's gone because sometimes when the things have gone wrong, you know, that is a seed of a really great future and a launch pad. But get real, get clear about where you want to go and get busy. And I think those would be the, the key things that I would say there. So three things then. Um, I think number one is make a decision that you want to change improve or recover your reputation it's going to take some work wherever you are it's going to take a lot of pro proactivity so you've got to be very clear about yeah i'm going to make this happen i'm going to do this i think the next thing is to be very clear about why so in your own mind think well why is it worth the effort what am i going to gain if i manage to achieve my reputational goals i think a third thing then would be to get some help because quite often it's very difficult for us to really recognise what's going on and perhaps some of the simple, if hard, truths we need to take on board about where the rep... Because reputation is very important to people, it's very, very personal. So if you can get the help of a coach or a, a very trusted friend who will tell it to you straight, then you're going to be in a lot better position to land what you need to do in order to be able to make forward and well you only asked for three but the fourth thing is just get busy get busy and get moving once you've set your direction as fast as possible as many interactions as possible to really get up pick up speed pick up that pace so that people can see that the change is coming you may have to be humble you may have to take it on the chin a few times but if you can overwhelm people with the good stuff the bad stuff will quickly be forgotten probably not forgiven but certainly forgotten <laughs> OK, I hope you found that useful. Um, it is a delight to be able to talk to somebody about how to recover reputations. And wherever you are with your reputation, I hope this gives you some ideas to move forward. If you want some more ideas, pop along to the Influence blog and look at the um, learntoinfluence.com slash ideas, where I've assembled a few other articles that are quite useful. And if, well, if you do want some help on this, if you want to talk through your situation and where you are with your reputation, be it recovery or going from good to great, make sure and get in touch. <laughs>